It's that lovely moment when we get to cook some beautiful food in real life rather than pretend. Mr. John Tarode, what are we cooking on our beautiful Genesis barbecue? We are going to cook fish and potatoes, actually really sort of barbecued fish and chips. I want to show you how to do a whole fish, which is done simply. And we've got this amazing sort of grilling basket in here, which we're going to cook the potatoes in. We've got some potatoes, we've got some chilies and some spices, we've got some whole fish, some fennel, things that sort of belong together. And we're going to make a dressing and a little flavoured butter. So potatoes, parboiled uh, salad potatoes or new potatoes, a little bit of oil, Put the oil on first, just a little bit, not very much, just so that all the seasoning and stuff actually attaches itself to it. Salt and pepper, good amount of salt and pepper uh, across the spuds. And then I'm going to add a little bit of paprika as well. And the paprika only because I like the smokiness of it. Me too. Spuds, whole sprigs of rosemary. I think whole herbs over flame work really well because see the oil's come out. Yeah. And then the same as the chilies. I'm just going to take these chilies and I'm going to split them in half. You've got the seeds, so you get a little bit of spice, but not too much. And I think they look pretty, Simon. Really nice. Yeah, nice and kind of chopping it. Well, the other thing I think is that actually, if you use lots of chilies, you know, when you do think about Padron peppers and stuff, God, those builders are noisy, aren't they? Yeah. Um, Padron peppers and stuff, you, uh, you always put them on a grill. Yeah. So chilies are exactly the same. Now, the great thing about the, the lovely barbecue, the Weber that you've given us, is that it has lots of gadgets. And it's a big thing, it's a Genesis, and it's got a grilling basket in it, it's got a thermometer on it, so it tells us how what it is. It's brilliant. It's great, isn't it? Yeah, I've got one of these and I use it all the time. And because it's gas, then you, it fires up quickly and you can get going. Okay, don't show off. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, anyway, so in there now, if we look at what we've got, we've got this sort of amazing basket in here. And that basket means that we can put veg in, especially small veg. Yeah. I'm just going to take those potatoes and they are simply going to go into this basket and we're going to start to cook them. See, that, that is the thing when you barbecue anything, that sizzle. The noise is important, and I think the other thing is just letting everything be even on that thing, yeah. on, the, on the plate. Rightio. So, well, fish. Now, whole fish, whole sea bass. These are beautiful. They're about one and a half kilos. You buy them all done. They're all scaled. They've got the, the guts taken out. The outside of a fish, the outside of a chicken is a piece of skin. You cannot season a piece of skin and for the seasoning to go inside. Yeah. It only stays on the outside. So, what we're going to do is we're going to fill the inside with some lovely bits. Fennel. There's a fennel bulb which is sliced. And drop that into a bowl. I love fennel. Oh, and, and, and it, with fish, it just the aniseed flavour is brilliant. Yeah. Some sliced lemons because they will just cook nicely and they go slightly bitter. Um, a little bit of, of dill. You know, it's just happened when we were setting up for this cook. Then the builders were pretty quiet, and now that we've started, all of a sudden they're kind of making a load of noise. Mix the things together. I think that if you can find pairings, fennel and dill, because really they're the same sort of flavour. Lemons we know work really, really well with aniseed, and fish. And fennel's not too strong. Yeah. Take whole sprigs of rosemary, and then we start to fill the inside of the fish. So you put it inside the actual fish itself, go right up to the head, and then do the same with our little bits of fennel and lemons. Open it right up and push it all the way inside. So now what we've got is we've got two fish, which we've got, and, and actually so it cooks nice and evenly, you want to be able to open the skin up. The skin can split. Yeah. So we're going to take that, the, the, the actual the sharp knife and cut into the fish right to the bone, all the way in. You just feel it finishing off. And that's it. Now, I've done the other side already. So the reason I wanted to do the two different ways with the fish is because if people have got this amazing piece of kit, yep. you get this the, the basket and you put the potatoes around. If you don't, you've just got a kettle. This, for me, is the best way to do a piece of fish. Keep it whole, a piece of paper, which we've got here, yep. and then a piece of foil. Now, remember what, what you said about we're going to use it more like an oven. Yep. So we're going to bake it, really, but we're going to have the flavours of that barbecue with a flame, and all those herbs are going to come together. So I take it almost like a cradle, take our fish, pick it up and put it directly on the piece of foil. Take that and then I don't even put any oil or anything on it. So this one here is going to go straight onto the actual barbecue itself. Yep. This one here, this lovely friend over here, is actually going to be put with the potatoes. So the flavour of the potatoes and the fish come together. Nice. So this one was saying if you've got a kettle barbecue rather than one of these, that will kind yes. of protect it. Yep. This way we've already got the kit. Oh. So here we go. Potatoes right. and stuff are starting to cook nicely. Yep. We're going to take this one, our lovely foil one. He's got the foil. And just take it and put it straight onto there. It's not beautiful, though. And then here, our potatoes are now, uh, you can hear them making that noise and starting to colour. 
little bit of charring that's happened there already in the smell heaven. Yeah, give it a, give it a decent stir and then just yeah. let it, you know, let that happen. Then give it a, a bit of space down the centre. And I'm going to put the a couple of the chilies just to I'm put that down the middle. There. Okay. So I put the chilies on now. I'm going to take the whole fish, the one that we've got, which is stuffed as ready. I'm going to put that across the top of the chilies. Oh. Now that that needs a proper close up. That needs a, that needs a still. That's a that's a bookshop, John to Road. But look at that. I mean, the thing is amazing, isn't it? Colour, fish. Temperature gauge on this tells that we're 190, which means that the, the temperature's dropped. Yeah. About 275, 280, nice and hot, so you get that lovely crispness of the skin. Remember, we're not putting any oil or anything on that thing at all. We just left it as it is. And let the fish and all its juice do what it wants to do. So I'm going to make a little quick whipped butter with okay. some seaweed, and I'm going to make my favourite dressing, which I started making when I was about... 12 my, my then stepmother showed me how to make it it's dressing in a jar it's brilliant okay so first of all i've just whipped up some um some butter so it goes nice and white seaweed flakes which are now able to be okay. bought anywhere you like okay we, we we talked about kind of the way in on master chef people's kind of ability to know about ingredients you think things like seaweed flakes imagine you know when you and i first knew each other 20 odd years ago seaweed flakes no chance would you buy those in a supermarket. No, no. Not a chance. No, the only way you could do it is get the nori sheets from a Japanese place. Yeah, you can make sushi and try and crush it up. Yeah. Uh, a bit of lemon rind across the top, inside as well. So we've got the saltiness of that seaweed, which is great. And the seaweed apparently is pretty good for you. So mix that together. And that's, we'll just put that to one side. Got a big jar here, couldn't find a small jar. Yeah. So any jar will do, but the thing is you make a big batch of dressing, keep it in the fridge, it works for ages. Lots and lots of mustard. So I've got vinegar in there and um, then lots and lots of Dijon mustard. Loads and loads and loads of it. Should be really thick. Dijon mustard and then uh, oil. What do you like to use for your dressing? Olive oil. Yeah. I like olive oil and I, I use about two to one. So two parts oil to one part vinegar and one part mustard. That's how much mustard. You want lots and lots of mustard. Wow. And it's going to sort of slightly emulsify itself. A little bit of salt, not too much. Uh, a little bit of pepper, that's fine, but not too much. Take the, the actual jar itself and then make sure it's well sealed before you do this. And then shake it like a Polaroid pitcher. <laughs> and what happens is it does wow, semi-emulsify. So nice. But it's really strong. And whatever people do, whatever you do, sauces, and whenever you do like dressings at home, they should be powerful. That's lovely and sharp. That's good, isn't it? Big, yeah. Really, really good. Proper, you know. Yeah. From an really Aussie, good. who didn't make it in Aussie, I did all right. So that goes there. So we've got our butter, we've got our dressing. Yeah. Put all this to one side. Still got a nice bit of colour, that's fine. And right now I'm sort of getting a slight bitterness coming from those potatoes, yeah. so I know we're sort of almost there. But the fish hasn't quite come alive yet. Yeah. But I think we're pretty much there. Oh, oh. There we go. The great thing about the fish that's on the foil, if you've got a kettle rather than having a, a genesis, your genesis you just pull the whole tray off. Yeah. But this one, you just pick up the whole thing and pick up the foil. And we're going to bring that across to there. Oh. Now, I said before, don't turn over the fish because the fish will turn out the boat. Yeah. I'm going to take this one and put that up. Put that on a board rather than straight onto your tank plate. And there we go. Oh. Yeah, you want a little bit oh. of colour, don't you? Yeah. And the chilies and stuff. Fish, potatoes in the back in a bowl. We've got a lovely char. They take that seaweed butter and just drop a little bit across the top and let that just Ooh. melt across the top of the fish. Remember, there's no oil on there for a reason. I didn't yeah. want it to be greasy. And then we take that potato, all those potatoes, a little bit of dressing. I always think when people make any kind of potato salad, for a better word, they overdress. Yes. And so you end up tasting only the dressing rather than that combination of potato and dressing. So you want, like you said before, John, you want the two things to become one. And then all I do is, because I want the whole thing to look nice, is I just want to pour, <laughs> and pour it across the top. Take a little bit of lemon, because I think it's always a good thing to do is to finish it off. Put the lemon on the side. There, one there, one there. Fish and chips, all done outside. 
that, my friend, looks amazing. Can we taste it? Yes, please do. What I want to just explain is people say, oh, they're a bit dark, they're a bit but you want the char of the flame. You want to be able to taste it. There's a bit of bitterness, the sharpness of lemon, a bit of mustard, sweetness of fish. Oh. And underneath here. John, those potatoes are amazing. Look at this, this, this. If you just pick this little bit of fish up. Mm. And that is, comes off the bone. That's beautiful. And it's beautiful. And inside's all that lovely seasoning. Good news. Lovely. That might be the best fish and chips I've ever had. Oh, Simon, you uh, are lovely. Honestly, that is, that is so good. And serving it that way is what you want to do. Serve it family style. Everyone digs in. Yeah. Um, enjoy it. Brilliant. John, thank you. That was magnificent. Thank you very much indeed. Whole seed bass with seaweed and lemon potato salad by John Tarode. If you want to listen to my chat with John for the podcast in full, head to weber.com forward slash grilling, where you can also watch Yota Motolenghi and Andy Oliver prepare delicious barbecue dishes. 